Welcome to Two Pete in a Podcast, where we will talk about child health from birth right away through to adolescence, dealing with issues of illness, development, and everything else that is of importance. Hello and welcome to Two Bees in a Podcast. I am Michael Platten and with me I have... Simon Strawn. Hi everybody. Hello. So we cut a bit early last week and we are continuing our talk about mouth infections. So last week we did all the normal bacteria in the, in the mouth plus thrush or candida and now we're going into viruses. Hand, foot and mouth. <laughs> yes. That's one of the common things we see. It is a viral illness that causes a fever in younger children and it causes ulcers in the mouth on the buccal mucosa and the tongue, and it causes blisters on the hands, the feet, and the bum. bum. Hand, foot, mouth, and bum. Or yeah. buttock, so hands and feet, it's usually on the palms and soles. Sometimes it can spread onto the other surface, the top of the feet. Uh, it is quite painful in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Children drool a lot. It's very common as outbreaks in creches. But thankfully, it resolves by itself. There is no specific treatment to kill off the virus. It lasts about three or four days. And the most important thing is to control the pain and fever with whatever you normally use and lots and lots of fluids. What's interesting about this is, in my experience, the children who have lots and lots of ulcers in the mouth, Mike, mm -hmm. tend to have fewer blisters on the hands and feet. And those that have lots of blisters on the hands and feet have very few ulcers in the mouth. Have you mm. seen that? Yes, I have. Absolutely. It's very weird, but it's there. And the thing about the ulcers there is that the ulcers literally are in the mouth rather than on the lips outside. Mm. Uh, and I'll, had, I'll segue this into Mike because the next thing we're going to talk about is herpes, herpes. And herpes presents with these horrible ulcers in the mouth. Often you will have somebody who comes to you saying, my child was seen last week with a sore throat. Somebody diagnosed tonsillitis, gave an antibiotic, and now I have this ulcers in the mouth and ulcers, Mike, on the lips and around the lips. Yeah, we've seen that very commonly. So redness around the mouth, ulcers in the lips, ulcers just on the inside of the lining of the lips, and, and also on the tongues. It can affect the, uh, the gingiva, so the lining of the gums just at the teeth. It can affect the, fa the pharynx, the pharyngeal pillars, like we explained in the last uh, episode, and the tonsils and at the back. So we call it herpes gingivos. Stone. stomatitis and pharyngotonsillitis because it literally just wipes everything out but it and also gets on the skin outside yeah. the lips yeah the so redness. that's that's the real that's the you get these horrible crusting lesions there and because it's so painful children generally have their fingers in their mouth and trying to make it feel better and then they infect their fingers so they can get little herpes things on their fingers yeah. too and this is the same virus that causes fever blisters right yes yeah, uh, because what happens is that after that infection disappears or the body fights that infection, the infection then goes into hiding and it hides in the nerves close to the spine. And when it comes or when you have any immunosuppression or any uh, stress on the body, what happens is that the, the body or the immune system doesn't suppress that infection anymore and it starts coming through. And that's why you start getting tingling before it arrives because it actually comes along the nerve and irritates the nerve and that's why you get tingles. And, and generally the tingling is in the same place, isn't it? Yes, it keeps People in the same get place. in the same place because it lives in that nerve root that supplies that specific area of skin on your lip. Mm. It's very similar to shingles mm. as well. So this is all herpes simplex 1, which is different to herpes simplex 2, which is the genital herpes. And we're not no. talking about that at all right now. Anyway, so treatment… We're not talking about it because it doesn't cause this. Yes. It's Absolutely not related not. at all. No, completely okay. not. Same virus, the similar virus, but, oh, okay. Herpes simplex 1 and 2 are different viruses, but they cause different things. Mm. And mainly herpes simplex 1 is in childhood. You yes. can get it older and, or when you're older, but also recurrent with the sort of, the And the treatment of herpes in the mouth? So, as anything, analgesia, so pain meds, uh, generally anti-inflammatories work quite nicely for that inflammation that's in the mouth. So, uh, something like ibuprofen. Uh, fluids, 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 because if they are eating food, it's going to be scratching on that ulcer and be very sore. And for herpes, we can give something called acyclovir, which is an antiviral. And that's not a be-all and end-all cure. If you have lots and lots and lots of lesions already or ulcers, and then you start the medicine, it's not going to change that much. It kind of stops it where it is mm. and reduces the ones that arrive after that. So it may make you 
have your illness for a day or so less, the pain will be a bit, a little bit less, but it's not going to make you better tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you need to try and catch it as early as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. But at that point, you're sometimes not sure that it's herpes. So you're probably not going to jump in with the antiviral. Yeah. So yeah. It's a tough call. And we don't want to put your child on antivirals or antifungals and unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. So that's why we need to keep following up. So when would we be concerned about this? If well, your anything. Child, Let's say when we yeah, concerned all about all of this. Yeah. All of this. Mm-hmm. If your child is not able to drink uh, and you're worried that they're going to be dehydrating because they are just refusing all fluids. They're not worried about food. They don't have to eat for two to three days. If they're not drinking, if they have, or if they are systemically so unwell that they are lethargic and tired and you can't really rouse them that much, if they have fever that's there for more than three days without symptoms, which, which we've discussed, or more than five days with the, these infections, because then there might be something else that's persisting. And if you're concerned, because... You can get concerned, like in day two of ulcers, like this is too much, I don't know what to do, then come see us. The good news is that generally with very good pain relief and making sure you keep up with liquids, small amounts frequently, frequently, even if you have to use a syringe and squirt it into the mouth, the vast majority of the children get better. And we very seldom have to admit children. And if we admit them, we literally give them fluids and pain relief. Mm -hmm. Well, there we are. I think that's it. If your child has allowed you to. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. If you found this of value, please be sure to sign up to our email list at www.careforkids.co.za and that's the numeral four and subscribe in your favorite podcast app or follow us on Facebook. At two Pete in a podcast. At two Pete in a podcast. T-W-O, not the numerical two. This is our disclaimer. The information we have given you in this podcast is our own personal professional opinion. We're giving it to you for your own information. Please don't use it to treat yourself or to treat anybody else. Rather, go and see your own medical healthcare provider and follow their advice.